I've always wanted to tell you this, but I don't want you coming into the house looking so dirty. Patricia said as soon as we were alone, glaring at me. I couldn't find the right words to speak out of fear with my husband and father-in-law gone. Um, well, just so you know, I won't let a dirty daughter-in-law use her bath. If you don't like it, wash in the kitchen, she said with a devilish grin, gauging my reaction. Of course I didn't have the courage to talk back. I headed to the kitchen as told and rinsed my body with cold water, feeling utterly miserable. Why is this happening to me? If I had known, I wouldn't have come to visit. A single tear rolled down my cheek, and at that moment, I snapped back to reality with a sudden noise. My name is Grace, and I'm 27 years old. I work as a sales clerk at a department store cosmetic counter. I met my husband Thomas two years ago. A close friend invited me to my first mixer, where Thomas and I hit it off talking about our shared hobby of traveling and we exchanged contact information. Soon after, he asked me out for a meal and as we spent time together, I became increasingly attracted to him. After dating for about a year and a half, we got married last month. When we visited his family home to introduce ourselves as a couple, I felt truly blessed. My in-laws were a kind and generous couple like someone out of a Norman Rockwell painting. I couldn't be happier that they would become my family. My mother-in-law, Patricia, in particular, seemed to take a special interest in me. When we visited the day before our wedding registration, she greeted me with a warm smile, saying, Grace, thank you so much for marrying our Thomas. I'm the lucky one who gets to marry someone like him. Well, I'm honored you feel that way. If you ever have any problems with my son, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. I won't be shy about it. Then let's exchange contact information right away. I recently learned how to use this app. Thomas, overhearing our conversation, jokingly frowned, saying, Hey, now. I was sure I could get along well with this family. At least that's what I believed at that time. But I hadn't realized the real reason Patricia was being kind to me. The sense of unease began just the other day. Since I work at a department store, my days off are often weekdays rather than weekends. Although I can request weekends off, I work with without submitting any requests. That day was a weekday, and my husband was at work, so I was at home alone drinking coffee. Then I received a message from Patricia asking, are you working today? When I replied, I'm off today, my phone rang almost immediately. Patricia? I was wondering why she suddenly called after we had just been messaging each other, but I didn't think too deeply about it and answered the phone. Hello? Hello? Ah, hello, Grace? Her voice somehow sounded colder than usual. While thinking it might be just my imagination, I asked, How are you? She then let out a big sigh. Ugh. What were you doing just now? Huh? Well, I just finished having breakfast and was drinking coffee. My! Coffee, you say? While Thomas is working hard since morning, you're drinking coffee? Um, yes, I always do this on my days off. Don't talk back. Do you even realize you've married into the Taylor family? I was too overwhelmed to find any words to respond to her. Not knowing how to react, I fell silent and she pressed an unreasonable lecture on me. From the beginning, your attitude has been wrong. When you first came to greet us, you brought those slightly high-end cupcakes, didn't you? Um, I'm sorry? I heard that your husband likes cupcakes. Did they not suit your taste? It's not about that. By giving us cupcakes, you're treating us like old people. Uh, no, I didn't mean to. You're really rude. 
Just so you know, I prefer cakes and chocolates. Can you not treat me like an old person? I'm, I'm sorry. Next time, I'll make sure to bring something that you like. I could hear her muttering something barely audible on the other end of the phone. In the end, she left a message saying, Don't slack off on housework and hung up on me. As the sound of the disconnected tone echoed in my ears, I could do nothing but stand there dumbfounded. It was only natural as I had just received such a sudden call. I never thought the true nature of my previously kind mother-in-law would be so terrifying. That night, when my husband came home, I immediately brought up the subject. Thomas, I got a call from your mother today. As I said that, his face lit up and he opened his mouth, looking genuinely happy. Oh, I got a message from mom too. She said she had a great time chatting with you and that it was a really enjoyable time. Huh? A great time chatting? Mom's always been shy around people and doesn't seem to have many friends in the neighborhood. So she said she was happy to be able to talk to you like this and it made her feel like she had a daughter and she was so happy. She said that? That was a casual chat today? That's definitely not the case. But there's too much discrepancy between his story and my actual experience. That was not a casual conversation. It was undoubtedly a sarcastic remark towards me. But he looked so happy, so what should I do? In the end, I decided to keep quiet. Maybe I should have told the truth right away. But he has great respect for his father who supports the family and his mother who protects the household as a housewife. Even now, he's happily talking about his mother and I couldn't bring myself to break the smile of the person I love. Since that day, Patricia's words and actions have escalated. She would tell my husband that she wanted to talk to me and would call me during my days off. Phone calls were still manageable, but recently, she started visiting unannounced. She would barge into her home and start inspecting the rooms. If she found even a speck of dust or a single hair, she would start yelling at me right away. Look! There's hair on the floor again! Um, this is black hair, so I don't think it's... So what? Are you saying it's mine? N no I didn't mean that. You really never know when to shut up. I wonder what Thomas saw in a woman like you. She would sigh deeply and give me a cold look. No matter what I did, it seemed like she would get angry. I couldn't do anything when she was around. Hurry up and serve me some coffee. Normally, you should have food prepared and ready to serve. You're such a failure as a wife. I was a fool to approve of this marriage. As she said these words so casually, I started to feel like there was something wrong with me. Was it some kind of brainwashing? The more time I spent with her, the lower my self-esteem became. One day during a long holiday, I happened to have three days off. My husband and I were discussing going somewhere when his phone rang. Hello? Mom? I had a bad feeling about it, but I kept quiet and waited for the call to end. A few minutes later, he finished the call and said with a smile, Grace, Mom invited us over to her place. What? She did? Yeah, she said she wants to have dinner with us. She's going to cook a lot of delicious food and she wants us to stay for a night. I see, but I... What's wrong? Are you not feeling well? Should I tell mom we can't make it? His kindness felt more poignant than ever. If I refused now, my relationship with Patricia would only get worse. I forced myself to accept the invitation and we headed to my in-laws home. When we arrived, Patricia greeted us with a beaming smile. Welcome, Grace! Come on in! Thank you. Thank you for having us over. I've been looking forward to having you two here. 
My husband is out with his friends and will be back tomorrow. I see. She was as gentle as the first time we met. In front of my husband and father-in-law, she would never show her scary side. This was her first visit since getting married, but my husband was with me. If I could endure just one day, we could enjoy the rest of the holiday together. Or so I thought. But right after that, she said something shocking. By the way, Thomas, I just met Jaden. When I told him you were coming back, he said he wanted to have a drink with you. Really? Jaden? Seriously? Yeah, why don't you give him a call? It's been so long since we last met. I'll give him a call. Jaden was probably one of Thomas's friends. He smiled happily and started calling Jaden. Jaden? It's me. Right now? Really? Everyone's coming? Yeah, I'll be there. I'll get ready and head over. His eyes sparkled as he ended the call. He seemed to be in a rare good mood. As expected, he happily brought up the topic. Grace, I'm sorry, but my friends and I decided to have a drink together. Is that okay? Of course. You've been away for a while. There must be a lot to catch up on. I'm sorry for leaving you after you came with me. But opportunities like this are rare, and it's been like five years since I saw Jaden. Well, I'm off. Uh, okay. Have fun. He waved goodbye with a big smile and left. As soon as I heard the door close, the tense atmosphere set in. What should I do? I'm alone with Patricia. This wasn't supposed to happen. My heart pounded as I silently looked down. Then she spoke to me. Hey. Yes? I timidly replied and she lazily opened her mouth. I've always wanted to tell you this, but I don't want you coming into the house looking so dirty. Patricia said as soon as we were alone, glaring at me. I couldn't find the right words to speak, out of fear, with my husband and father-in-law gone. Uh, um, well... Just so you know, I won't let a dirty daughter-in-law use her bath. If you don't like it, wash in the kitchen. She said with a devilish grin, gauging my reaction. Of course I didn't have the courage to talk back. Uh, um, what do you mean, wash in the kitchen? Oh? Didn't you understand what I just said now? But using the kitchen is really... Shut up! Stop talking back and just wash the dirty body of yours. You better finish before I get out of the bath, understood? She snorted and confidently headed to the bathroom. If I didn't do as she said, I'd be treated unfairly again. I followed her order and went to the kitchen, rinsing my body with cold water. The season was autumn. I continued to wipe my body with a wet towel in the chilly air. Desperately holding back my tears, my limit was gradually approaching. Why did this have to happen? I was filled with a sense of misery. At that moment, along with my sadness, anger welled up all at once. Why is this happening to me? If I had known, I wouldn't have come to visit. As a single tear ran down my cheek, I heard the door suddenly open and a voice say, I'm home. It was not my husband who had just left, but my father-in-law, Sean, who had returned. Hearing his footsteps, I quickly put on my clothes. However, while putting on my sweater, he appeared in the kitchen. What? Grace? Why are you here? Sh Sean? Weren't you coming back tomorrow? I finished early, so I took a taxi home. But, but your clothes... S sorry I'll get dressed right away. No, it's my fault. I thought you were my wife. 
She's in the bath right now. I'm sorry you had to see me like this. I quickly got dressed, grabbed the wet towel I have been using to wipe my body, and headed for the living room. And then, seeing my situation, he asked me with a puzzled look as if he sensed something. Grace, what did you use that towel for? I was wiping my body with it. Oh, I said more than I should have and quickly covered my mouth with my hand. But he didn't miss that moment. With a serious expression, different from his usual gentle demeanor, he gazed at me. Why were you washing your body in the kitchen? You could have just taken a bath, right? Well, that's because, um... Don't tell me. Did my wife say something to you? Um, that's, um... He muttered, I knew it, and held his head. Seeming to have an idea of what had happened, he began to speak apologetically. Actually, I once accidentally overheard a phone call of my wife's. I didn't know who she was talking to, but she was ranting about not slacking off on housework. That call? She must have been talking to you. I thought she was just warning Thomas. That's what anyone would normally think. I felt something was off because her tone was different than usual. But when I asked her about it, she dodged the question. I never imagined this was happening. I'm truly sorry. He said his apologies and looked down. Then Patricia, who had just gotten out of the bath, came asking, What are you doing? Honey? What happened? Did Grace do something to you? As she tried to console him, he glared sharply at her and yelled, Don't screw with me. This is all you, isn't it? W what? Me? That's right. It's because you treated Grace terribly that this has happened, right? What? What are you talking about? I didn't do anything terrible. Then why was she wiping her body in the kitchen? That... Sh she did... She did it on her own. Believing that talking further wouldn't resolve anything, he called my husband on the phone. After hearing the situation, my husband rushed back and ran to me, asking, Are you okay? Dad told me. Making you use the kitchen as a substitute for the bath? You didn't have to listen to such an order. But I was scared of what would happen if I refused. So you were that scared of my mom. I'm sorry I didn't notice anything until now. I thought you two were getting along well. Just then, my mother-in-law ran up to my husband, desperately clinging to him and insisting, That's not true! It's all Grace's lies! I didn't do anything! I couldn't help but feel disgusted at her for only thinking of her own self-preservation and not admitting her wrongdoing. I took out my smartphone and showed everyone the numerous messages she had sent me. They included things like, Useless whining wife. You don't deserve my son. I'll make you divorce if you defy me, and so on. There were even some that could be taken as threats. Seeing this, she began to tremble, and Sean also turned bright red and trembled. But the one who showed the most anger was none other than my husband. He grabbed her by collar and pulled her face close to his, ignoring her gasp. He raised his voice to an incredible extent. How dare you! I can't believe you could do such terrible things! She's my wife! I trusted you, but you betray not only me, but also Dad! Do you understand that? T Thomas, wait, please! Let's talk first! There's no point in listening to your talk! I'm sorry, but I have no intention of ever being involved with you again. I don't know what Dad will do, but I can't take it anymore. I can't consider someone like you family. Don't ever interfere with our married life again. Goodbye. 
No! Wait! Please wait, Thomas! No! Her scream echoed through the room, but not a single person had any sympathy for her. Later, my husband told me that his parents got divorced. Shaw must not have been able to forgive what happened this time either. He immediately demanded a divorce, gave her half of their savings as a property division, and kicked her out of the house. After getting kicked out, Patricia was carrying the cash in her bag, and it seems she was pickpocketed and almost all the money was stolen. She's now desperately searching for the culprit. It's a fitting retribution for her. As for me, thanks to my husband and father-in-law, I was able to regain a peaceful daily life. There is no one left to blame me. From now on, I can live a happy life. If I have a son and he brings home a bride, I want to build a relationship where we can all smile.